I survived Minecraft Hardcore mode for 400 days, and this is how I did it. Welcome everybody, my name is OneTap, today's video is going to be a long one. If you're here for only the world tour, look down in the description box below, I'll have a timestamp for where that is. Oh, and sorry if I sound a bit weird, I've actually been sick for the past week or so, so yeah, sorry about that. Won't be sick in this video though, so you guys don't gotta worry. Anyways, make sure you guys have some popcorn, sit down and relax, because this is gonna be one long movie. The first thing I actually did was say hi to my horse Henry, I'm sorry for leaving you here for a whole month buddy. And then I walked into my garden and breathed in the amazing fresh air. Oh, those flowers smell good. And then finally I went down to say hi to my villagers inside of my farm down here and yeah I think I gotta shut this off someday, there, there's too many in there now. So I basically spent day 3 of 1 just trying to get reacquainted to the world because it's been a while since I've been here, just getting used to being back in here again. I definitely want to finish the library though in this 400 days, that is a priority. So I'm kind of walking around thinking about what I was working on when I last left off because I forgot honestly and I see this roof and um, I think it needs building. So I know for sure that we're going to need some red concrete and that is exactly what I set out to do. And later that day I started building in more parts of our roof. And I even worked a bit into the next day and this is when I started to realize the sheer amount of blocks I was going to need for this roof thing. It was way more than I originally thought. And also just the basic concrete finish looks a bit odd to me. I'm definitely gonna have to go back and texture it a little bit maybe. That's gonna be a pain. Wow, three days into the episode and we're already getting work done. This is looking good. Also these fish over here caught my attention and I went ahead and went to go try to pick them up with a bucket because I noticed I still needed this advancement it's called tactical fishing and it was a super easy one to get completed. We're on our way to getting all the advancements in the game. I haven't really been getting anywhere lately though as you can tell. I went to check on our iron farm because I completely forgot that we built this in the last video and there is literally no iron in here. I'm not sure if it's because I just haven't had the game open or it's just not working well. I'm not sure. We're gonna give it some more time though. I woke up on day 304 and looked to the left side of my house and I forgot that I actually wanted to build a garden kind of thing over here and I really wanted to use Podzo for the dirt and to do that we're gonna need a silk touch shovel or a silk touch pickaxe, silk touch anything. And unfortunately I do not have any silk touch on any tool that I own which means I'm gonna have to go out either enchant it or try to get a villager that has silk touch. I went with the latter option so I went and captured one of my villagers and forced him to read so he could become a librarian and give me that book. It actually wasn't too long before I got the silk touch, and what happened next was basically, I was, I just realized I kind of trapped myself in here, I never made a way for myself to get out, so when I was trying to figure that out, he managed to escape. And when he left, I didn't realize this, but I think he dropped back inside of the pile, and he kind of just like vanished, I'm not really sure why, so I gotta do this again, I'm trying to get another villager up here, and let's repeat this process but this time I actually made myself a way that I can get out from. Hopefully I don't lose the villager again, that was just silly of me, man. And it really wasn't that long until I got silk touch again, I don't know what's going on, my luck is just crazy right now. But I traded with him to lock the trade and um, I realized that I could actually get a silk touch book right now because if I broke this bookshelf I should get books and then I can buy a silk touch book. Thank you villager for your service, but I must leave now, I'm just gonna leave him here, we can deal with him later. I grabbed a random extra shovel that I had inside of my tools chest and applied silk touch onto it. That's just so it doesn't go on my main shovel because I probably don't want silk touch on everything. I went over to our old base area and started clearing out some of the podzel that was left over from the spruce trees that we were farming. Now I'm just gonna fill this thing in, it's looking great, I think I'm gonna put some fences around here and then we can put in some flowers. Alright, let's go into our decorations chest and grab some flowers that we think might look good. So if you don't remember, we actually built a flower farm in the last 100 days. Um, and yeah, we have a big arrangement of flowers to choose from. I really like the rose bushes. I think I'm going to take one of those. We're going to take a lilac, um, a couple orange tulips. Oh, that's too many. I meant to only take two orange tulips. Maybe just a red tulip, actually. A pink tulip would also look nice. Uh, corn flower. I'm just going to choose a bit of everything. And then finally, we're going to go with blue orchids. Two of them. All right, that's good. Let's go check out our area. I'm just going to wrap around to the back of the house here. Oh yeah, and I still gotta build this. I really want to build a nice fireplace on this side of the house. Uh, this house is still, a lot of it is all work in progress. Alright, anyways, back here, um, I actually don't have a gate. That's a problem. I don't know if I'm actually gonna need one later, though. It's probably fine. I don't think I'm gonna have a gate in the final build. Okay, let's just put some flowers here. Uh, just sprinkle this here, here. Rosebush can go there. I did not mean to bring five lilacs with me. We're just gonna do this. 
Okay, I actually decided to just come back in the day because we can get a better look of things here. And I kind of like it. And also, if you didn't know this, you can actually bone meal these big uh, flowers over here and you can just get more of them. It's that simple. I actually did not used to know that before. Just a cool little fun fact. But yeah, I kind of like this garden. It's kind of chill just on the side of our house. Also, I just want to say that I have an idea of making a guardian farm in this 100 days. It's going to take a lot of resource grinding. I remember in the last season when I did the guardian farm for the first time, it literally took me so long. I don't remember how long it took, but maybe like 10 or 15 days in total worth of just gathering materials and building it because it's a pretty long build. And also on day 307, I came across this villager just chilling on the main floor of the library. I was kind of confused on how he got there. Not really sure, but I basically spent this day working on more of the library. And I actually got a bit carried away because for the next two days, I was working on the second floor of the library and also did a little bit of texturing on the roof using some red wool. And later I'm thinking of grabbing some red terracotta to texture the roof even more, but for now, enjoy the time lapse. And this is the section where I texture my roof and it was a bit hard going through and just breaking some random blocks and putting in some wool without making it look weird. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back, break everything and just build and texture along the way. I feel like that would be a bit easier. And also if you're wondering, those blank spots are where I'm going to be placing red terracotta in the future. On day 311, I started my farm for some more red terracotta. Or I shouldn't say more, because this is my first time gathering terracotta in this world. And this was also something I actually didn't know before. I thought you could only get terracotta in those like special biomes, but you can just smelt clay. Like, I feel so dumb for not knowing that. But that's gonna help a lot with some texturing on our roof. Alright, so I've got my clay in here smelting up, and we got terracotta here. So, um, I'm like 99% sure this works, but if it doesn't, I kind of wasted my time. Okay, good. It does work. We can get red terracotta. That's perfect. I can actually use that now to texture our building. That is quite amazing. I just got to get a lot more clay because I don't think like 60 or I don't remember how much I got. That is probably not going to be enough. All right. So um, this is kind of what it looks like right now. I did a little bit of texturing on it and it already looks a lot better than just the static concrete color. But yeah, today I'm thinking about going into the nether because I want to get another beacon. So let's go and try to hunt down some more wither skeletons. Good thing another fortress is closed door portal, because it only takes me about 10 seconds to get there. It's super quick. I started off with fighting some blazes because I couldn't find any wither skeletons on my first run around, so that was a bit boring. Looks like I'm gonna have to stay here for the next couple of days. This was actually so crazy, but on my second wither skeleton, I managed to get a skull. The looting three on the sword really does speed things up. I'm super grateful for that. Thank you. Now it's basically already the end of day 315, but we got home with three wither skeletons relatively quickly. It didn't take too long. Also got a ton of blaze rods as well and some magma cream. It's going to be very useful for potions if we're going to be doing that later on. I think I'm going to head off to bed right now and the next morning we can fight the wither for the second time. And right away in day 316, I didn't even put anything back. I just went straight down into the mines and started the other wither fight. So I didn't even bring anything to prepare this time. I think I should be able to kill him pretty easily though. Also, I kind of got jump scared here. I was kind of confused on where he was, and then he just appeared out of nowhere, and that, that kind of scared me. He was right above me, too. That was a bit dangerous. But yeah, you know, just a basic wither fight. I've talked about this a lot already. I don't think you guys want to hear it. Just pretty simple, except at the end, I kind of got a bit ballsy and just decided to just rush him, and I didn't realize that I was getting kind of low, so three hearts-ish. Kind of scary, but I think we were probably going to be fine anyway. And basically, for the rest of the day, I spent cleaning all my inventory because I, it was a mess right now. Also, we got to trade with some villagers for a bit more emeralds because I think we're going to need some more blocks to do a second pyramid. And when I say pyramid, I meant like the beacon pyramid, by the way. Also, our shield is a low, I think. I'm going to have to make a new one. Alright, and I went with strength 2 on this second beacon. And now look at our buffs. We got speed 1, strength 2, and regeneration 1. That is insane. 
And also, I usually don't go with Speed 2 because, in my opinion, I feel like Speed 2 is a bit too fast and then the FOV just changes and it's just a bit weird. I don't know, Speed 1 should be good enough for us right now. Also, um, I'm planning on probably changing the colors later on because white is kind of boring and basic. Oh, that's just beautiful, man. I love these beacons, bro. Over time, hopefully I can get all six beacons. I think for this next little bit, I'm gonna work a little bit more on the house just because this thing is still unfinished, bro. This I made this house way too big for, like, what I actually need because I definitely do not need to use all of this space. But, I mean, I guess we gotta build it anyway. I'm gonna have to gather some more wood because I already used most of it on the library. And from days 317 to 319, I worked a bit more on the house. I hope you enjoy another mini time lapse. And yeah, a creeper managed to creep up on me while I was looking at my inventory, so yeah. So yeah, I managed to basically get the first floor completely done on the exterior and uh, most of the second floor, just a little bit on the top areas is all we're missing. We got a ton of progress done in the past two days, that was pretty good. Basically just we gotta get the roof now, that's gonna be hard to do. And the rest of day 20, I went over to our rainbow sheep farm and continued filling in some more of these colors. In the future, I definitely want to try making some pixel art. I think that'd be really cool to add to some like farms or anything we build in the future. Alright, a random thought just came in my mind, but last season we built this ender dragon statue that we used to like kind of show off our ender dragon egg and as well as the head. I think I'm going to build that right now, maybe somewhere by the library out in the front because that thing looks really cool. And also, by the way, I found it on Reddit a while ago, so all credit to this statue goes to those guys as I'm pretty sure those guys were the ones who first made it. But I just really love the look of this statue. Alright, now that we've finished building that statue, I'm gonna grab my dragon egg as well as our dragon head and let's head over and place these things inside of the statue. So I've decided to just put it right over here, right in front of our library, kind of facing it, and it also, yeah, the path kind of stops and then goes this way over to here. And also, I probably should put some signs here, uh, I'm not really sure what to say. I guess I could say the date that we defeated it, but I don't really remember which day that was. Whatever, one day we might put some signs here. But I'm pretty sure the head goes down here by his feet. There we go, it looks pretty nice. And then the egg goes up in his hand. Boom, there we go. That looks epic. Dude, I, I really love the look of this statue thing. It just it just looks so sick. And also, if you're wondering what this block is, I think it's black. Yeah, it's polished blackstone. Something like that. Some special variant of blackstone. But I noticed that we had like three stacks of blackstone in our nether chest. So I was like, might as well use it. Well, that is another thing that is checked off of our list. Maybe next up, we should probably work on the house a bit more. Some things are still unfinished. Like that's just a square. That's a square. The roof is just undone. We've got a lot of work to do. But for the rest of day 322, I decided to fly out far and wide to find sand and gravel and clay, all that kind of stuff, because in the future we're definitely going to be making a lot of builds that involve concrete or terracotta, so I think I'm just going to try to do that now, just so we can have a good stash of it just ready at our hands. And finally, when I arrived home for the next three or so days, I spent working on our house. Just some minor little things that I didn't get to finish all the way before, and so some things I just added to make it look a bit better. Yeah, these are all basic minor adjustments, and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. But yeah, nothing really happened these next couple of days. And of course, like a lot of things that I do, I decided to completely just remove this top part of this balcony after doing this for like every single one, because I had a completely new idea. I was trying to work the roof design into all of this. Alright guys, I'm super excited to show you what I have gotten done. I've gotten a ton of work done, and have a pretty good idea of what the roof is going to look like. But yeah, you can see up here, we got some like, support beam things for the roof. If we walk outside, we got these nice- I changed this all this stuff to dark oaks instead, because before it used to look exactly like this, and it was just exactly the same. But I had some dark oak, and also some lanterns there. The dark oak really adds a nice feel to this build, I really love it here. I'm trying to think about what else I did, let's see. It was a super- uh, hard, like, getting all this wood, too. There was a lot of wood that was needed. Oh, yeah, also, I feel like this part of the roof might be a bit boring. Um, I was gonna build a fireplace here. I might still try, but if it doesn't work, I could kind of make this balcony curve around, and it could, like, curve over here and meet that side. And, um, yeah, we could just have, like, a patio or something over here instead of that. Because I'm already planning to build a fireplace on this side, actually. I, I, I left some room over here for it. 
So yeah, a lot of good progress. I got a lot of the house done. Basically, all we need now is interior and the roof. I'm super excited for this thing to be finally done. We started this so long ago. And drop some ideas about what you guys want to see inside of the house because we have so much empty space. I have literally no idea what we're going to be putting on the second floor. I mean, I guess my bedroom is going to be that way. And also downstairs, like we got the small little room right here. That's where the fireplace is going to be. And then also down there, we got a huge hallway. There's a ton of different opportunities to build some cool stuff in here. I woke up on day 326 and I decided to go out and explore in some random direction. Uh, I was thinking about bringing Henry with me, but then I realized it'd be way too hard with all of the mountains and stuff they're probably going to encounter. Oh, I just threw my chest plate by accident. Did not mean to do that. I'm just gonna start by traveling this way. Um, I don't know if I have enough rockets. Oh, never mind. I have that storage thing. Okay, for a second I thought I did not have enough rockets there. And this village right here, I'm pretty sure we've already explored, so I'm just gonna go right past that. Alright, let's keep going. And it was nighttime, and I came across a desert temple, which I don't think I've explored yet, so let's go check this thing out. I'm hoping to find an enchanted golden apple because, I don't know, I've never gotten one ever, I don't think so. Oh, whoa, I came inside and there were two creepers and a spider in here. But you already know I'm a pro Minecrafter, so I pulled it off without taking any damage. I'm just kidding, I'm not actually a pro Minecrafter, I'm kind of bad at PvP to be honest. Alright, let's go down here, we're looking for that golden apple that's enchanted. Oh, and we got a normal one, okay. We want the enchanted version though. Two diamonds, decent, that's good, that's good. Ooh, and three diamonds and an enchanted book that has Frostwalker 1 on it. I'll take the five diamonds though, I, I like that, I like that. I'm also just gonna grab these bones, cause why not? On day 327, I came across another village. I don't think we explored this one yet. Um, I'm gonna look around, but I'm pretty sure villages aren't really useful for us anymore because they don't really have that good of loot. And yeah, long story short, I didn't find anything in this village. And later I came across a group of cows that were just chilling on some planes and it actually reminded me that I should probably go home and like, you know that cow pen that I used to have? I don't really have a use for that anymore. Wait, one sec. Oh, did you guys just see that flying kill on that squid? We're gonna need a replay on that thing. Alright, that was completely epic, but anyway, as I was saying, we should probably kill those cows that are in that pen because we don't need that anymore. And I finished off my exploration adventure with some mining, just a bit of coal, that's about it. Found some patches of surface coal and I figured coal is something we're gonna need a lot of. And also, when I'm finally done sorting out my inventory, let's go head over to our cow pen and let's kill these guys. I'm really sorry cows, but this has to be done. Time for a mini cow killing montage. <laughs> Okay, I just want to say, look at how much stuff we got from that. That is insane. Over a stack of leather. I don't really think there were that many cows. Looting three, I think, just helped it out a ton. And on day 328, I decided now is the perfect time to build my guardian farm. I don't really have anything else I really want to do. But I'm right now, I'm looking for my obsidian because I swear I had some obsidian from earlier. But it turns out I didn't. I don't know why. I don't know where it went, but I swear I had obsidian. That makes me a bit sad because I don't want to go and gather 48 blocks of obsidian because I'm going to be using Mysticast design this time. Here it is on screen and I need a lot of obsidian and a lot of other stuff. So yeah, um, time for resource gathering. We all know and of course we all love it. Time for me to gather 48 blocks of obsidian and countless stacks of soul sand, dude. I remember doing all of this in the last season for the Guardian Farm, but it really does pay off because the Guardian Farm is absolutely amazing. The output is just crazy because they spawn so fast. Oh, I'm so excited, man. I really can't wait. And yeah, the design says I need 10 stacks of soul sand. And I think this little patch that I found right here is the perfect size, man. There's so much soul sand here. And after a very, very long and grueling time of just mining soul sand, we're finally done and I think we just need a little bit more things until we can finally build this thing. Also, my shovel and my elytra are back to full durability for more trading with villagers, so we're good and set to go. Alright guys, I welcome you to... Uh, I don't know what... I, I don't know why I started with... That, that, didn't, that didn't make sense at all, hold on. Welcome to me showing off all of my new materials, I guess? Okay, anyways, we're gonna craft some soul campfires. I know the... The picture that I just showed you guys said that we need normal campfires, but I'm gonna make soul campfires because they do double the damage, I think. So it might be a bit more efficient. Uh, but I do have all the materials now, though. Hold on, I gotta kill this zombie. Where is he, bro? Oh, he's in my house. Why, why are you in my house, bro? Get out of here. Alright, back to the materials, though. We have everything, I'm pretty sure. Food is stocked up. Everything is good. I hope I'm not missing anything, because if I am, I'm gonna be dead, because I'm pretty sure the ocean monument is a, a thousand or so blocks away. Anyway, let's start going on our journey to the ocean temple. Alrighty, we're going on a trip in our favorite rocket ship. You see what I did there? We are using rockets to fly, so I guess we can call ourselves a rocket ship? Bruh. 
I'm sorry, I was trying to make this boring flight a bit more interesting. Oh, uh, I, I don't think this is- Oh, it's not looted. This is not looted. Alright, well, I guess we have a second chance at finding an enchanted golden apple. Let's see what we get down here. Um... I am not mad, just disappointed. There's really nothing down here. I didn't get anything good. Just golden iron. This was a trash temple. Let's get out of here quick. Oh boy, we have finally arrived to our destination. Welcome everybody to the magnificent Guardian Temple. Now this thing looks beautiful, but something I just realized that I kind of forgot about is that we gotta fight these scary dudes, and that was a bit of a struggle for me the last time I tried this. Those guys do look pretty scary. Hopefully we can be successful. Alright, so, um, I kind of forgot how to fight these things, so I'm kind of going in blind, but we're just gonna give it a shot. Oh, I'm gonna use this door right here for some air real quick. Oh, uh, this is actually what I did last time. I kind of found this out by accident, too. Oh, I'm getting hit. I'm getting hit already. Shoot, man, I don't remember how to- how do I stop these guys from hitting me? Do I just have to fight back? Like, dude, I- I'm underprepared, bro. I should have looked up how to fight these things, bro. Alright, well, I dug a hole here just a bit ago, somewhere in this area, before it actually was able to hit me with the mining fatigue. Hold on, I can't find it, bro. This is- this is getting scary. Should just be somewhere right here. Hold on, let me kill this guy first. Where's the air? Give me the air! Give me safe. Oh, gosh. Oh, god. Okay, let's see what happens here. Oh, get, get me in safe! Okay. There we go, now I got the mining fatigue. Oh shoot, that guy's gonna hit me. Okay, how do I how do I do this, bro? How is this even possible? Oh, I think that works. I, I think that's what I did last time. I would jump up and just hit him with a bow. I mean, this isn't too bad. It's, it seems to be working, kinda. All right, I'm, uh, I'm gonna just do this for a while. I think I, I should have enough arrows for this. Yes, finally, that's the first one down. Time to go fight the other two. All right, so I'm finding it quite impossible now because for some reason the first time I didn't have mind fatigue when I uh, first encountered the temple, but now I do, so it's basically impossible for me to break in. But I can see creepers over here. I'm gonna try to get them and make some TNT. I think that's what I did last time, and I forgot it this time somehow. Oh, you're joking. That thing exploded. All right, well, yeah, I'm just gonna try to find some creepers. Let's get some TNT. Well, now that I've conquered the ocean, I think it is time to finally build this farm. I was about to call it a temple. We're building a farm here. Now enjoy these upcoming cinematics. And finally for the soul sand, I was struggling a bit because I had no way of getting air so I had to bring my doors down with me and I was constantly placing them down so I can get air every like 10 or so seconds. And not even to mention the guardians man, they were shooting me left and right bro. This was definitely a very difficult thing to do. I probably should have just came with like an invisibility potion or something. Alrighty guys, we are finally done. I am so tired, but hopefully it pays off because this farm is actually going to be so amazing for us in the future if we need any builds with any sort of prismarine. I'm at home because I finally sorted out my inventory, got everything cleaned out. Let's go head over to the nether and check out what we got. So basically, if you enter the nether here, you're going to see this big cobblestone arrow that's pointing in a certain direction. And I've just made a couple of these so I know exactly where to go. And these, of course, lead over to our collection chamber where we can get all of our stuff. So I probably AFK for about like eight or so minutes. Let's check out what we got. Oh, and yeah, we got a lot. I wasn't even surprised, to be honest. During the first time when I made this farm, I was just astonished by how much stuff is actually outputted. It's kind of crazy. But now we can get my favorite block, or maybe one of my favorite blocks of all time in this game, sea lanterns, dude. I just love the look of them. 
All right, so it's currently day 340. And you know, I'm thinking we got this huge, nice wooden mansion. We need a pool somewhere. And Prismarine is one of the perfect blocks, in my opinion, for making some pools. I'm gonna try to do that today. First, I gotta pick out a nice spot. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm thinking it's gonna be about this big. I think that's good. And you can see that I'm gonna be having some sea lanterns on the bottom, of course. And I'm thinking of adding maybe some chairs and like a patio around it. It could be nice. And there we go. That should be the last water thing that I need to place. Look at this, man. This thing just looks sick. We got the little patio on the side, some chairs, and even a little floaty pool tube bed thingy. I don't know what this is, but I built one anyway. And yeah, the prismarine just makes it look so much better than if I just used some boring old stone or something. All right, you know what? We got a ton of progress done on the house today. I think we got to get a bunch more progress done on the library as well, because that roof needs to be completed. And once that roof gets completed, then we can start working on the interior. And I have like no idea what the interior is going to be like right now, but I want the roof to be done because I have a good idea what that's going to look like. So I've already gathered a good amount of like clay, sand, all that kind of stuff. So we should be able to make a bunch of terracotta and we do have a uh, sheep farm, which will provide us with our red wool. All right, cue the time lapse. Let's get building and texturing. And welcome back from the time lapse, guys. I just want to explain kind of how I did this. I saw this on a very old, um, what's it called? Mumble Jumbo video. I saw this on a pretty old Mumble Jumbo video where he used an infinite scroll wheel to kind of scroll through a bunch of different blocks. And that's kind of how he randomized like the block placement. But sometimes it doesn't work. Like right here, there's just a row of like five or six wools. I'm going to try to change this real quick. But yeah, anyway, that's basically just how I've been doing it this whole time. And there we go. That's the last block. I think we are finally done. I cannot believe it, man. All the grind and the exterior of the library is finally completed. All we got to do is decorate the inside now. This thing is looking pretty great. Some parts I feel like are a little bit not like they don't look as good as other parts but i can't really do anything about that because that was all random oh and i just realized i left my shulker box sitting on the roof i gotta go get that well that's a wrap guys i'm so excited to actually decorate the interior so next up on my list that i have never actually touched before is bees i've never actually messed with them in the b update came out a while ago was it 1.14 where the b update came out i'm not really sure it might have been 1.15 actually because i think 14 was the village and pillage update all right well anyway yeah i haven't really messed with bees ever before and I swear there was a beehive in this area somewhere. I think there was. And I think I have a silk touch pickaxe, so I should be able to uh, mine it. But bees can like pollinate crops and stuff and make them grow faster, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure what they're for, but I just want to have some. They could be some cool pets. All right, so I actually had to fly out kind of far for this because there were no planes anywhere near my house. There was a small patch of planes that you guys saw earlier, but there was nothing in there. I'm just surrounded by Savannah, but anyway, we are here inside of Plains Biome, and I finally found one of these beehives, and there's also a pumpkin that I discovered nearby too, and I'm not sure if I've actually had these yet. Actually, wait, no, I do have them. What am I thinking? I literally have a pumpkin farm. And now that I'm back home, I think I've found the perfect spot to build this, like, bee house kind of thing, where we're gonna be storing all of our bees in. Just a cool little building to fill in some of this empty space back here by the library as well as our other garden. So I'm just gonna make like a little path kind of going in this direction I guess. And uh, I think I'm just gonna start marking out like a little area slash dig site for where I'm gonna be building this bee house. Alright I'm gonna go and grab some more wood and then I'll get started building this thing.
Oh no, one of those guys escaped. Oh, I didn't think about that. I probably should have left the door closed when I was gonna introduce this scene. Alright, here, let me open it up so we can get back in. But anyway, I have this thing done on the outside, I think. Oh, shut up, zombie. Where are you at? It's probably hiding down somewhere there. Like, there's a lot of holes under here. I'm too lazy to find them right now. Oh god, no, that bee's running away. No, you gotta come back, bro. Well, anyway, um, the inside is really bland right now, but I just thought I would plop down our beehive and then put some flowers around here to get them going. And I'm definitely going to be decorating this thing for sure. But right now, it's day 350, kind of out of time. And I think I'm going to leave it for another day. But yeah, it was working. Where did the bees go, dude? They were like, are they inside the nest? Can you tell? They might be inside the nest. I'm not really sure. But there was three bees in here before. And there was that one bee that just ran away. I have no idea where he went. I think I have to wait till nighttime and then they'll go back inside of their little uh, beehives. I'll just leave the door open, whatever. But yeah, I really like how this kind of came out. And if you haven't already noticed, um, I kind of took inspiration from Green's bee house kind of thing. He used uh, dark oak with the white stained glass, and I really liked the light colors mixed with the dark colors. It just it just looks beautiful and honestly fits in because we got we got dark oak here, and this is not dark oak, but it's still it's they, these two woods look really similar actually. This is spruce, and that is dark oak. Yeah, I just really like how these different types of woods kind of fit in with our surroundings. I don't have glass here. How do I not have glass here yet? Well, that's something I gotta work on. Um, yeah, my inventory is still a bit messy. I should probably go clean that up. But yeah, I'm just super happy how this turned out. I'm still looking for the bee that ran away, man. I have no idea where he went. I really hope he can come back safely. I mean, it shouldn't really be that big of a problem because we can go and just get more beehives, I think. That should work as well. Oh, there he is. What's up? I found you. Hey, oh, wait, can't you get them on leashes? I need to find a leash for this guy. Come on, bee, you gotta go home. Nah, he's not listening to me. He's just like, I'm gonna chill by these flowers over here. Bro, I got, I got rose bushes for you back at your house, man. Do you want to come over? Okay, I don't think he wants to really come over. I'm just gonna let him do whatever he wants to do, I guess, over there. And hopefully he comes back here at nighttime. Day 351. I grabbed my shears and went over to our beehive area. Because I remember reading on the wiki that you can actually uh, gather the honey from these beehives using shears. So I went to go do that, but I didn't realize that the bees actually got angry at you. I think I didn't read that part on the wiki. Um, I got a bit scared, but thankfully it's just a bit of poison. It's not really gonna do much to me. We should be okay. And later, I think I'm gonna add a bit more bees into that beehouse. Also the bow. Right now I have a bow with mending on and I don't really like that. I think I might want to switch it to infinity instead. So hopefully do we- yes, we actually do have an infinity book. Okay, that's really good. I don't remember where I got it, but at least we got one. I don't think I have any other power or punch books that I can use, which means I might have to just enchant a bow. And remember, we actually have our enchantment station in our old house. Oh, hello Enderman. What are you doing in here? Huh? Okay, never mind. We're just gonna ignore him and use the secret lever. Not really secret, kind of out of the open, but we got our enchantment room back here. I haven't used this thing in a while. But the first one, flame. Oh, I don't, I don't like that. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna keep on trying until I get some good enchants. Oh, power four. This one could be. Oh, dang. It's just only power four. I'm still gonna keep it though. Ooh, I'm breaking three. Oh, I'm breaking three power three and punch one. That's not bad. And I'm thinking about just taking this one and leaving it because I honestly think it's good enough for now. Oh, I'm not really sure. Should I? I'm gonna keep it. Whatever. Oh, and I went and checked and I can actually combine these two bows. And it only costs four enchantment levels. So I'm gonna take that. Now we got power four on the bow and I can add infinity onto it as well. And there we go. That bow is looking pretty nice. I think that's good enough for all that we need right now. And the next day, I just decided to add on a bit more to our sheep farm over here. These guys have been a bit lonely, I haven't touched them in a while, and I really am excited to get this thing finished. Oh, don't fall inside these holes. That would be really annoying to get out of. Well, anyway, I think doing some pixel art with these wool colors would actually add a nice addition to some buildings and farms in the future. And I actually ended up doing a little bit more than I had planned. I did finish up this magenta colored sheep over here, and now I'm going to be doing another color, and this one's going to be brown. We're like four or three colors away from finally being finished. Dude, this is going to look so sick when all the colors of the rainbow are finally done. Um, I encountered a slight problem actually when trying to do the brown colored sheep because I thought there was a way you could craft brown dye but turns out you cannot and uh, you can only get it from cocoa beans or whatever. And I haven't found a jungle yet in this world. Probably gonna be a while till I do that so that's kind of a rip. Gonna have to put this on hold. So we've encountered a slight problem. I don't know where my villagers went but I can kind of hear them. I can hear zombie villagers around here just moaning and groaning, but I can't see them. Like, they're invisible or something. I have no idea where they are. This is a bad bug, man. I really hope this is just a glitch, dude. Oh, I just fell in here. Did not mean to do that. I gotta get out. Yeah, well, anyway, I don't really know what to do about it because all of my villagers that are, like, in the open are gone. Like, the villager down here is gone as well. I can hear them, though. It's so weird. Like, I literally hear them in this area, but I don't know where else they could be. Like, I'm not really sure. There's no way they can just kind of escape, right? I think I'm just gonna restart 
my game and just see what happens. Oh, sorry guys, this is an editing note. I have no idea why, but the, the audio just did not record for these next couple of clips. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Oh my goodness, thank the lord that these guys are back, bro. I don't know how they turned into zombies. I guess a zombie must have gotten down here and gotten to them, but yes, we have all of our guys back. I, I was scared for a sec that I lost them forever. I guess I'm gonna have to carry these guys back into normal villagers before they despawn. And that is exactly what I did next. And once again, this audio just for some reason didn't clip. See, so yeah, I'm sorry about that, but I always thought that curing the zombies using that golden apple was always a satisfying sound. All right, well, now that we finally got that taken care of, it's time to move on to greater and bigger things. So let's see here, what should we work on? Oh, something I really want to change are these paths, actually. I've had it in my mind for a while. I don't really like the look of the dirt paths anymore. I feel like some stone paths could look a bit better, but that's just some fine detailing and I'm probably never going to end up actually doing it because it's going to take me too long. Oh wait, I left a hole here. And for the rest of the day, I was kind of walking around, sitting by my pool, trying to get some inspiration. But remember, if you guys have any ideas, feel free to leave them down in the comments below of what I should build, what I should to add to this world because sometimes it's nice to have some other feedback from other people and also i didn't really like this big hole in my base previously so i kind of just added a pillar and i think i'm gonna fill this up and make it kind of symmetrical to the other side add some oak planks right here and also you can see that this downstairs area is more of a square now it kind of flows in a bit nicer but like i'm not really sure if i like this completely but it's gonna have to do wait one second i gotta get rid of this bed here i haven't used it in a while but yeah not 100 sure if i like the look of this but we're gonna have to go with this since i already made the downstairs stair i can't really change it if i do it's gonna take a while all right i'm gonna get this wall furnished and then i'll move on all right so i've came up with an idea i want to build a potion house or a potion room kind of thing so in this blank area right here behind the pool i'm gonna break this way whoa what is dude how have i not seen this before there's just a huge ravine down here that's a small hole good thing i haven't fallen down that because that's kind of dangerous well anyway back into this potion thing i'm thinking of just having like a small little thing on the top and then i want it to go underground because i don't know when i think of a potion house i kind of think of them as like a secret scary underground kind of bunker thing i'm also going to use some of our wool to make like a minecraft pixel art potion that's going to be on the outside so we can all see where it is and so i spent the next couple of days gathering materials and also building these small little potion house um i actually went into the nether to get some of these green planks uh i think they're they're warped they're warped stems or something like that i just call them green planks because that's what they look like but i've kind of changed my mind and decided to go with a more like nethery style house and you got to remember this house is actually going to be quite small because the main nether room is going to be in the basement so i'm kind of spending a lot of time just for something on the outside but you know building is basically what minecraft is all about right and also i started using basalt for the edge i originally went with some spruce wood but i think basalt fits the edge a bit better and also it looks exactly like a log so that's pretty cool i also discovered this new block that i've actually never used before in any sort of build and it's this like warped high fay or whatever you basically just put four warped logs in a crafting table shape and it makes these really cool six-sided log blocks. Ooh, take a look at this thing, man. It's looking pretty great. The inside's nice and small, basically just how I wanted it. Also got a little upstairs area that um, I don't think I'm really going to use, so I might just cover it up. Not really sure, but yeah, this flooring also, I'm going to be using some just normal basalt here. Still got to do this flooring, but this house is basically almost done. I still have no idea where I'm going to be putting the potion pixel art sign, though. All right, well, it's basically done. Here it is. Um, it doesn't really look like it's in place. There's no, like, uh, I should add some terrain stuff on the outside to kind of make it fit a bit more. You know, it kind of stands out. I got all these medieval-style buildings over here, and then there's just this one random nether building, but sometimes that is okay because it adds a bit more variety inside of your builds. And also, while I was flying around, I noticed uh, these cobblestone things. I think I marked these to make future buildings, but... I'm not really sure if I want to do that, like over there as well. Like, what am I even supposed to put there? I don't remember what- I, I should have put like a sign or something that wrote what I wanted to build in that area because I completely don't remember. Um, so I might just remove these in the meantime because, uh, yeah, I don't really know. I'm more planning on building things in the back over there because there's a lot more room back there. But yeah, if we take a look at this thing, I kind of made the entrance by our pool. Oh. But yeah, if we take a look at this thing, I kind of made the entrance by our pool here. I removed some of these leaves and I'll probably have like a step down, some more pathway that hopefully blends this like normal overworld into the nether styled building. And now that we're inside, we got the nice base out flooring and I'm not really sure where. I'm probably right here. I'm just going to dig down and it's just going to be a downstairs which we can access the huge potion room. That is my thoughts. Well, I really like how this thing came out and um, yeah, I, I think this is a super sick building that could add a lot of flavor to our kind of town area in the back here. 
And on day 361, I started to dig down the big room of the basement for the potion house. I think I'm going to make it fairly large so I can have a chest or a barrel for each potion brewing item. Now you can kind of see this room coming together. I also grabbed some of the red wood from the nether, which is the crimson, I believe. And I'm using that in contrast with the warped logs that are on the outside of the house. So when you're on the outside, you'll see blue. And then when you walk inside, it's going to be red. I think that's going to look really cool. Also, if you haven't already noticed, I changed my beacon to haste too to make this thing a bit better. I still do not have auto mine yet. Something that I could definitely work on. I'm also going to do a little bit of cleanup around the outside. I'm going to make this path kind of look scattered and broken and make the dirt in this area just look kind of infested or just dirty. Like, I just want it to look kind of messed up because it was perfect before and it looks kind of weird. I think this should fit the vibe a bit more. Alright guys, I think I ran into a slight problem. I realized that since it's only this far down, I can't really make a ceiling because if I ever place these blocks, it just goes onto the overworld. Which means I might have to make this thing a bit deeper. Which I don't like because I don't want it to be such a long staircase to come up every single time. But I think I'm going to have to do it because I, I don't want a dirt ceiling, obviously. Also on the outside, you can kind of see what I did here. I kind of just scattered around some cobble, some of the smooth stone from the path here, some coarse dirt, and also some gravel as well. Kind of just randomized it and made it look like it was really dirty around this area. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it around the whole house. Uh, I, I guess I probably will. Also just put some bone meal around it as well to make it look more full and less empty with some grasses and some flowers. And I'm also thinking of recreating one of those uh, nether trees right here. I just put a warped log thing right here just to indicate where I'm going to be building this tree. I think it's a nice spot for it and this adds a lot of diversity I guess in this area. I really like this. This might be one of my favorite builds, to be honest. I, I don't know. I just really like uh, nether, dude. I, I never build any nether style builds. Oh, I also got to finish this chimney, bro. There's nothing here. And basically next, I just worked on finishing the outside of the house, texturing the ground around it to make it look muddy and dirty and such. I decided to make a whole ring around the house of the textured ground. And finally, I had to move down the basement like two blocks deeper. And also, I decided to just scrap the idea of the staircase in general because like you can kind of tell I've, I've tried so many different things to make it work, but it just really isn't working right now. I think I'm gonna have to go with like a magma slash soul sand elevator kind of design instead. It probably will be faster and will look cooler to be honest. Just mind my own business, getting some blackstone, you already know. I didn't realize this, but I didn't need a lot more blackstone than I originally thought for this project. And you guys will see why soon, don't worry. Okay, so while I'm working on this basement right here, I have some questions for you guys. I'm looking for a name for this sword right here that I have, this netherite one. I want to see some comments down below, and I'll pick a random one for the next episode. I did this in my last world, and it was super fun hearing some of the names that you guys came up with, so I'm gonna start it up again right now. I'll probably be picking the name like two or three days after the video is uploaded, so make sure you guys comment quick. And we're also gonna be naming many other items and tools in later episodes. Alright, I'm gonna change directions completely. Let's go into the library and trade with some villagers. I think we should get a bit more trading done and also get some more librarian villagers and put those guys inside of their trading hall spots because i think i only have one in there right now and also i've been thinking about building a museum with a bunch of cool stuff in it and that's where i'm gonna be moving the dragon statue because right now i feel like that dragon statue is kind of in a weird spot it's kind of just in the middle of nowhere and yeah i think building a museum would solve that issue that's probably gonna come at a later time though because we got a lot of unfinished projects we gotta do Wait a minute, I hear a villager zombie, please, no. Oh, dude, how again, bro? I literally just cured this guy, I swear. There's a hole up there, that's why, bro. I gotta patch that thing up. Dude, I'm gonna run out of fermented spider eyes. It's all because of that hole up there. I gotta get that thing patched up ASAP. First, I gotta cure him, though. It's a good thing we have a ton of gold. Also, I reactivated the villager breeding machine over here. Before, there was a hole where all the villagers were falling into and dying because before, I didn't really need them. Now, I'm turning it back on, though, because I'm gonna be making some more librarians. And basically, I was fiddling with this villager, but I made a mistake when I broke this minecart. He just disappeared, and for a bit, I was confused. And then I realized, wait, there's probably a hole back there. I need to go check. And there was a hole, and I realized quickly, oh shoot, he's going to escape. Covered it up, and, and I was back to push him in this spot, and he really wouldn't budge. This was tough. And finally, at the end, I got him inside. I punched him by accident, uh, but it's okay because I don't think his trades were affected, hopefully. All right, so I'm pretty proud of the work that I got done today. You can see we got four villagers here. The one over here is my Silk Touch one, and then the one right over here is a new one that I just got. It's Bane of Arthropods 5. And they might think this is kind of useless, but like, I don't know. I'm just trying to get a bunch of different types of a chance. And this one over here is my basic mending one. Over here, we got infinity. So now that we got those guys moving in, that means this place I can clean up. I don't need that anymore. And also over here, I can clean up as well. I don't need this either. So I think I got a lot of good work done today. And also I traded with a lot of villagers, of course. 
All right, it is roof time of our house. We are chipping away the progress in this project slowly and slowly, but I can feel it. We're gonna get the end very soon. And I predict we're gonna finish the house's exterior at least by the end of this 400 days. So I spent two or so days working on the roof and here is a time lapse to kind of show what I got done. Alright, so now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about building a museum because that has been something on my to-do list for a very long time. It can actually serve a bunch of different purposes, not just being something that we can like showcase all of our stuff at. And of course, in this museum, we'll be moving our dragon statue into that area because I think the museum will be a better home for it. I want to challenge myself with this build and right now in my mind, I'm thinking of like white blocks like quartz and white concrete. I'm not exactly sure what the color palette is going to be just yet, but I kind of want to go outside of my comfort zone. This museum is probably going to take a very, very long time to build the exterior at least but i'm hoping that i can get it at least done before 500 days i think that's a like pretty good timeline i guess to set anyways we're not going to start it now i'm just saying some ideas that i have in mind so i don't forget them all right so we're settled down now brand new clean inventory and i have a new thing i want to talk about but i just realized that we do not have a weaponsmith like i swear we had one but i guess we'd never had a weaponsmith but i don't recall making a grindstone and he's not inside this area as well that's weird bro well, i think i'm gonna have to go do that but anyway the reason why I want this is because I'm thinking of inside of the museum having like a bunch of different tools and armors on display that have different types of enchants. Like for example, we could have another sword with like Smite 5 or like Bane of Arthropods 5 or something instead of sharpness. And that can be on display inside of our tool area in the museum. Dude, I'm just looking at our house over here and it looks beautiful, man. The roof actually makes it look so much better because when it was flat, it just looks kind of whack. And if you're wondering what that cobblestone thingy up there is, the two roofs up there are kind of hard to like merge together, so I'm thinking of just building like another separate watchtower or something up there. It might not look good, but it's just an idea. If it doesn't look good, I can just break it and I'll figure someone else out. So through the next two days, I worked on getting a weaponsmith, which wasn't that hard at all, and I started working on enchanting for Bane of Arthropods. This was actually a lot harder than I first thought. I made a lot of emeralds. Wait, hold on guys, after a bit of XP grinding, we got it bro, Bane of Arthropods 4, that is sick, let's see what we can get here. Oh, that is a good sword, Bane of Arthropods 4, Sweeping Edge 3, and Fire Aspect 2, that is a pretty good sword. I am going to keep that, I am very happy with that man, I am very, very happy. And for the rest of day 374, I know this kind of sounds random, but I went around trying to plant some trees and like bone meal the ground a bit because it was really boring, this landscape around my house. But I found out the oak trees were a bit short. They were kind of like in the way of the paths and I really didn't like that. So um, I guess a, an option is to do like the custom trees. I'm not the best at custom trees, but like, I guess I could give it a go. And I spent day 375 clearing out more of the potion room basement to have a bit more room to do our building and stuff. And now it is day 376, and I remember at the very beginning of this 100 day segment, I said that I wanted to complete the library fully by the time we reached 400 days. Well, it's only about 25 days left, so I better get started. To decorate the interior, of course, I'm gonna need a lot of books, so I think I should start with trading with some villagers first. We got the villagers down here in the basement of the library that actually will trade us some bookshelves, so that's gonna be pretty helpful in this project. Of course, I'm gonna have to grab a bit more spruce wood for the inside of this house, so day 376 was basically just a gathering materials day. And when the next day rolled around, it was time to get started with building. I started placing down some bookshelves, but I'm definitely gonna need to trade a bit more with those librarians to get more bookshelves, because this probably isn't enough. I also filled in these white concrete walls right here at the entrance, because I was planning them out for a while, and I'm just gonna fill them in now, because why not? I'm also gonna have to trade a bit more with some villagers, because right now the amount of bookshelves that we have is just not enough. And seriously though, filling up the roof was so boring. The inside area of this library is pretty large, so it took me a while just to place the floor for the ceiling. We might actually include some stuff up there, like an attic or something in the future. Also, right in the center of one of these like circle balcony thingies on the inside, I think I'm gonna try adding a chandelier. Just a super simple one. Just like the classic fence design where you kinda um, make the fences kind of poking outwards and I'm gonna add some lanterns on them. And this continued over the next two or so days, um, just trading with some villagers, and I managed to amass a ton of emeralds from all 
all this trading. And it's adding more into the interior of the library. Yeah, just placing down some more bookshelves and adding some more decorations to spice up the environment inside of here. Also, I really have no idea what I want to do with this room right now. I'm just going to add some doors in the front to make it look nicer, I guess. And then also this room as well. I think I might make this one like an office, actually. This could be an office. And I guess this room could be like a bathroom. Because, you know, all libraries need a bathroom, right? Yeah, I'm going to try to get some materials for that. I don't really... I'm not really used to decorating bathrooms, so this is going to be interesting. Alright, what's up guys? It's a brand new morning and I'm excited to show you guys what I came up with. So here we go, we got the two doors. I'm probably gonna have some signs up there later, but we don't have that right now. Inside, we got... This is the sink. I know it kind of looks weird, but you're gonna have to deal with it. That is the tap and there's some water in there, looking pretty good. Over here, we got the toilet. It's just a cauldron, super basic, and that button right there is just uh, how to flush it. And we have no toilet paper here because... Um, I guess this library doesn't support toilet paper. No, I'm just kidding. We, there's no room here at all. And the other room is exactly identical. So I hope you guys enjoyed our little bathroom tour. It's time to move on to building some other things. Also, I just want to say, look at our emerald count, man. This is absolutely absurd. Even if I take these 11 blocks real quick, I'm gonna craft them as normal emeralds. We can really look at this thing. Jeez, we are rich, rich, bro. How many stacks is that? Now that we've gained a lot more levels, I decided to go and spend them and start working on getting a smite 4 or smite 5 sword. So right here, I'm kind of just putting in some more lapis. Let's see what we can get here. There's a disenchanting everything I don't need. Let's see what we got. Oh, smite 4! Smite 4! Dude, that literally took like how many enchants? Like three? Smite 4 and unbreaking 3. Now I can probably combine some of these smite 2 swords and make it smite 5. I think that's possible. Hopefully I'm not wrong. What do we get here? Just smite 2. I'll get smite 2 again. Perfect. Well, we're close to getting a smite 5 sword, hopefully. So I'm over here at my weaponsmith and I brought my anvil with me because I think I have enough to make this into a smite 5 if I have enough XP points. So that is going to cost 6 points to get to smite 3. Guess I'll do that and then we'll do it again. Should be another 6 points. Yep. We're already down to 19. Now this costs 10. Yeah, we only have 9 left. Yeah, we definitely do not have enough. That costs 19 levels, but we can get smite 5 on breaking 3. That is crazy, man. Smite 5. That's cool. Thank you, villager, for your service, but I must leave now. Oh, and also, I don't know if I should shut off this villager breeding thing. It's reproducing at an alarming rate. And also, when I got home to put back our swords, I forgot that our sword isn't even max yet. All we have is sharpness 4 on this thing. Like, we could add... We have to add sharpness 5, of course. We could have, like, sweeping edge. Maybe some fire aspect could be nice. There's a lot of other possibilities I could do. I should probably be focusing on my sword instead of just some other random ones. And so since I only had nine levels, I'm gonna go and uh, use my mob grinder. I haven't used this thing in a while. Dude, I really need to build an enderman like mob grinder kind of thing because those enderman farms give you so much XP. That was the main thing that I used back in season one. Also, I literally sat here for like 20 seconds and look how many mobs there are already. This thing is actually not bad, especially for like an early game kind of mob farm. Oh, whoa. Do not get too close to them. I almost forgot about that. I don't want them exploding up here. Okay, so right now you can see that I'm at level 25. I've been doing the mob grinder thing for a little bit, but I just thought of an idea. Can you fight the ender dragon a second time and get the same amount of XP or does it give you a reduced amount of XP? I'm not really sure. I think I'm going to go and try to do it anyway, because every time you fight the ender dragon, it opens up a new nether gateway. And um, I think if you kill it 20 or so times, it opens it 20 times in like a full circle. That'd be kind of sick. But yeah, I got to go to the nether to um, get some gas tears to make those end crystals to actually respawn it, which also gives us an achievement. So it's going to be good to do this anyway. Also getting a bit sidetracked here, but I just found a Bastion Remnant, I think, because I just got this achievement. And um, this is uh, the first one I've come across in this world, so that's pretty sick. I might have to get a bit distracted and try to loot this thing. I gotta be super careful, though, because uh, I know those guys can do a lot of damage to you. And here is what I got from some of these chests. Also, this is all that I looted because it was getting really dangerous in there, and I figured I would just leave it for another day. I wrote down the coordinates so it'd be easier to go back there next time. Phew, now that we're back home, it's time to craft up these uh, end crystal thingies. This is gonna be exciting. I'm pretty sure I'm kinda overpowered for this fight, so I'm not really gonna prepare that much, but gotta clean my inventory first. Also, I'm not trying to use a billion rockets and fly over there again, so I'm just gonna use my nether ceiling. This way, if I wanna go back and forth, I can do it pretty easily. All right, now that our portal is built, let's see how close this thing is to our actual like uh, tunnel into the end portal. Wait, I think I recognize this. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's literally right here. It's like four blocks away. That's perfect, man. It's right next to our little tunnel. That's sick. So now I'm here. All I gotta do, I think, is just place these end crystals in this kind of formation. One there, one here, and the last one. All right. Oh, there, there we go. It's happening. It's working, boys. That's kind of sick. I'm gonna kind of run backwards as I have no idea if this thing is gonna explode or not. Look at that thing, man. That's beautiful. 
Wait, even the iron bars come back. That's kind of cool. But also kind of annoying because that means I have to climb up there again and break those things. And I think it should spawn now. It should be up there. Come on, I'm waiting for it. There we go. We got the achievement. The end again. Time to go fight this thing now. Also, I don't know what kind of visual glitch this was, but he was going invisible when I looked at his head, so that was kind of weird. Also, I could have easily killed him here, but I wanted to kill him in more style. This was, uh, just hitting with a sword was kind of boring. So, I managed to do Bruh. this. And that was it, ladies and gentlemen. We just killed the Ender Dragon for the second time. But sadly, it looks like it does give you reduced XP. It still managed to push us up to level 30, though, so that's great. We can finally make our Smite 5 sword. Yay, I don't think you've ever heard anybody say that in Minecraft. Who gets excited about a Smite 5 sword? Also, I'm trying to find our second end gateway that opened up somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. I found it. Awesome. Now we gotta fight him 18 more times to complete the circle? Yeah, I'm probably never gonna do that. Alright, we got the experience levels. Let's do this. Smite 5 and Unbreaking 3 on a diamond sword. This is costing me 19 levels, man. That was definitely the best 19 levels that I've ever spent in my whole life. No doubt about it at all. Oh, and also, anyway, let's name our sword right now. Why not? I saw a lot of comments down below, but the ones that stuck out to me that I kind of thought were funny were One Tap. Thanks, you guys, for the suggestion. And it's kind of funny because my name is One Tap. My sword, don't worry, I'm going to get Sharpness 500, I promise. And maybe some other kind of cool enchants just to make it better. Hopefully, we can One Tap some mobs with this thing. And don't forget, if you want a chance for your name to be featured in the next episode, we're going to be doing the pickaxe and the shovel next episode. So drop some comments down below. What do you guys think I should name them? Well, now that everything's back and settled, it's time to continue working on the library so i traded with some more red villagers and placed down some more bookshelves decorating the interior of the library a little bit more i also need to place torches around the outside of this library because mobs keep on getting near it and it's annoying all right cue the time lapse for decorating the inside Alright, so it's been a minute since I've been recording and I want to show you guys what I've done on the interior. I've basically finished it up. Um, also, yeah, I planted these trees here. I decided not to do custom ones because uh, I, I wasn't too great at them. I don't know if you guys have seen this one, but this is the one I did in the last episode. I actually don't think I showed it, but it's... It, I don't even know what it looks like, man. It looks more like a mushroom. That's green, kinda. Alright, anyway, let's get back onto the library. So, in the front, I got these nice trees out. These are just normal spruce trees I placed from saplings. I think it works. And now, uh, we welcome you inside of the grand library. Now, these, I, they look a bit weird. I literally tried my best. I couldn't figure out any sort of lighting that I could do right here without making it weird. At first, I wanted it to be in the ground, but I realized that if I broke this, you can actually see that it goes into the basement, so I can't do that. On our left here, we got the bathrooms. Uh, this is the woman, this is the men, boys bathroom. On this side, we have our uh, lectern thing with a book. This is going to be our library catalog, which is where uh, we're going to figure out where all of our books are. And yeah, this place is staff only, as you guys can see right here if we walk inside. This is going to be an office. I haven't even built that yet. But if we make a right turn from the entrance of it, we got these rows right here. This is where we're going to be putting some books. These signs are going to be like telling us what books are going to go inside of here. So we got three slots right there. Over here is a nice little chill reading area, I guess. Put some carpet down, some seating. Uh, I need to fix the lighting here, definitely. The lighting is not done here yet. 
So it's gonna be a bit dark and it might be a bit dangerous uh, with mobs. Hopefully uh, no mobs blow up this place because that'd be really sad. And then on this side, it's basically just empty except this wall. Haven't really finished it yet. There's just so many bookshelves, man. There's It's crazy how many bookshelves that I've used. Now we're upstairs. We got uh, these computers over here. Also computers on that side as well. Some chandeliers. I think you guys already noticed that. And also these things are kind of, uh, I don't know what to do here, but I, I needed lighting. And this is the only way that I could figure out um, that it wouldn't look too weird, I guess. Just some trap doors and then there's glowstone behind it. All right, so if we walk over here, this is just some decoration, nothing over there. And yeah, this isn't finished. And then there's also one more side over here we want to go check out. This is where we're going to be putting our mending book. Oh, that's a, that's a bit too far of a zoom. This is where we're going to be putting our mending book. You can tell uh, what I did with the signs right here. That's kind of how it's going to work. And more slots right here against this wall right here. Uh, just kind of a window that you can... Look out and see my house. Over here, just some more slots for books, and that's kind of it. But I really like how this library turned out. I really love the bookshelves, man. Just The bookshelves look so sick, dude. They're just so calming, except down there. That looks a bit scary. It's just too dark. Well, anyway, I've been building for a pretty long time now. I think it's probably a good time to take a break and start doing something else. All right, but real quick, I want to actually add some lighting here. I got to get some glowstone. The next thing that I want to add on, actually, is to our house, because uh, we have a ton of open space in our house. I think you guys already realized that. And I think I'm going to fill up one part of it over here just to be like a kitchen kind of where I can store my food. Just an idea because I gotta start filling in some of this empty space. So the next day I got started working on this like cozy little wood styled kitchen area over here. There's not that much room since the staircase. It's not really in a good spot. I don't really like where it is and yeah I don't know. I'm gonna have to deal with it though because it's gonna be really hard to move it and I'm not really sure where I would move it. But yeah it's coming together kind of nicely. I'm just gonna be storing all of my food here. Um I'm basically done building it. I'm just trying to add some foods in here now. You can kind of see what it's looking like. I really love the cozy atmosphere that this thing gives off. As you can see, I added a bunch of decorations on the tables and stuff. And I think maybe some carpets actually down here could be nice. Yeah, I'll go add that. Day 393, I got these two armor stands on me. This is where I'm going to be placing some of the armor that we're going to be working toward right now. So next up, we got those trash swords. We had Bane of Arthropods, we got Smite. Let's try to get some trash armor. Or not really trash. Let's go for like a blast protection or just like a different type of protection on it. So I think, yeah, we're going to try to go for blast protection first. Uh, time to head over to our enchanting area. Wait, this this is not my uh, enchanting area, my bad. Alright, right over here. I went in the right place this time. Dude, I just realized I forgot to bring Lapis. What am I doing? So basically, I just enchanted a lot, got some more XP to try to get some blast protection armor. But then midway through, I decided to switch to fire protection because I actually had the opportunity given to me right here when I got fire protection for an unbreaking three leggings. Now for the second enchant, I'm taking a gamble on this one. Oh my goodness, the luck. Fire protection four. Good thing I took that chance. All right, three times in a row. Can we get this? Is this unbreaking three? Oh no, protection four. Dude, never thought I'd say this, but I do not want protection four on breaking three right now. All right, I'm taking another gamble here. We're going to do unbreaking three. Ooh, Blast Protection 4. Not quite the Fire Protection we're looking for, but I'll keep that because I know we're going to need that later. Okay, so I know I'm getting a bit carried away with all this stuff, but like, in Minecraft, we want to try getting everything that is possible to even get. So it'd be really sick if we had a museum where it showcased all the armor sets all maxed out and everything in each separate class. That would honestly be amazing. Okay, so I was able to get a Blast Protection 4 Diamond Helmet as well as a Projectile Protection 4 Diamond Chestplate. So the Blast one's going to go here and the Projectile Protection one will go here. Now we are well on our way of getting all of the armor sets. And from days 397 to 398, I worked on the villager hall in the basement of the library, expanding it and making it larger, placing some more villagers inside of there. I think we already showed multiple time lapses of this happening, so I don't think we gotta do that again. Well guys, I added some lighting out in the front here. These are kind of as a slight mob problem inside the library right now. I'll, I'll work on getting that fixed, I hope. And yeah, I added some more lighting back here. It's just some carpets to cover up the glowstone like you can see under this carpet, for example. Yeah, there's some glowstone there. Hopefully it prevents some mobs from spawning up here. Now into the basement. If you look onto your left over here, you got this door and it just patches up the ugliness over here. Uh, so there's kind of like a barrier. And I also added another row of things here. We got some more spots for villagers because right now they're actually filled up because we got a brand new one. And it's a feather falling three villager, which I need because I do not have any feather falling on my boots yet. So it's looking like we got a pretty nice villager collection so far. Super excited to see how big this thing becomes. Sheesh, are these maxed boots now, bro? Those things look insane. They have to be maxed, right? I'm not sure what I'd be missing. And also, I was flying over our rainbow wool sheep farm over here, and I forgot that we never got this thing done. I was pretty optimistic at the beginning of this 100 days that I would be able to finish off this rainbow sheep farm, but once again, we do not have the cocoa beans to be able to get the purple, or not the purple, the brown dye. So next 100 days, we're definitely going to get this thing finished. We're going to head off to a jungle and grab those cocoa beans. 
And to end off day 399, I filled in these windows here that I never actually built for some random reason. I don't remember why. I guess I just forgot about them. Well, that makes things look a bit better, I guess. Also, fireplace. I gotta build that. Oh, and if you're wondering what this kitchen looks like, here it is. I don't think I actually showed you guys when I first finished it. Uh, we got all the foods lined up at the top, and then we got this nice black and white tiling floor. I really like how this thing looks. And that is the end of our 400 days journey. Looking back at all of the things that we managed to build on this epic adventure, it's kind of crazy how I got this far. I want to thank every single one of you guys for sticking through this series with me. It's been super fun to make, definitely one of my favorite series I've ever done on this channel. Just looking at the house, man, this thing is absolutely amazing. If you showed me this image right here, like, I don't know, a year ago or so before I started this series, I would be absolutely astonished. I'd be like, there's no way I could build that. But I've learned a lot of techniques from this series, season two, as well as the first series, which is season one. I think if you guys went back and watched season one, my builds would be not as good as this. I know I'm kind of being a bit harsh on myself, but like, let's be honest here. I've definitely grown as a builder. Also, I already got some plans for 500 days, man. We got to visit a jungle to get cocoa beans, like I just stated before, but I also want to visit a woodland mansion. We still have not done that. Now, if you're still watching this far, I want to thank you guys so much, but now it is time for the world tour. Here are the cinematic replays. Now that is going to be it for today's video, stay tuned next week because I will be releasing a little teaser trailer for a new series that I will be beginning, and I will see you all next time, peace out.